Hello stamping friends! It's Robin Armbrecht here with Really Robin Stamps. Today is March 5th, 2021 and there's a little bit of a hint of spring in the air. So I'm pretty excited about that. How about you? So I've got a couple things for you today. And I'm just so thankful that you're here. I appreciate your time. And I'm just honored you would spend some time with me, whether you are watching me live or whether you are going to watch this on the replay later on. Thank you so much. So I thought um, it might be a little too early, but I'll tell you what, I'm ready. So um, since I see a little buds of daffodils kind of popping up um, from the ground, I guess they're not buds, they're leaves, but I'm seeing them. It's exciting. Seeing a little... Um, crocus plant coming up. That's exciting too. So anyway, we're going to do some cards that have a little movement to them today um, called swing cards because we're going to swing right into spring. So let me show you um, what's on my stamping table. Let me flip you around. All right, how is everybody doing today? I am well and I'm super excited to be with you. All right, look what I got for you. So, so, so exciting. We're gonna talk about this new butterfly bundle that is available and I'm gonna show you these swing cards today. Let me zoom in just a little bit. All right, so it is March, and as of March 1st, we um, are able to purchase this um, early release bundle of products that's going to be in the next annual catalog. And this year, for the first time ever, the annual catalog is going to um, debut May 1st instead of June 1st. So this is our current catalog, and this will end at the end of April, and then we're gonna get a new book. So that is that is super exciting. This um, butterfly bundle will be in the new book, so we get kind of a sneak peek at it. So let me just show you the pieces, and then we're gonna dive into making the swing card. So here's the stamp set called Butterfly Brilliance, and this is one piece, it's a big background stamp, and you get six gorgeous butterflies on this <clears throat> large background stamp. And they are just beautiful. They are kind of, um, they look like they were sketched. So they have a lot of dimension to them already. Um, they're beautiful stamped. Let me show you what they look like stamped. I did my homework. So this is just stamped in Misty Moonlight right onto the paper. And then I stamped it again on white and then I cut them out. So here is one of the dies that comes in the coordinating die set called Brilliant Wings. So this will cut out all six of those butterflies at one time and then you've got all these fun little butterflies to use. Now, I haven't written down yet um, the names of these, but I read that these butterflies are from all over the world because Stampin' Up! is a global company. And so they like to um, choose images now that kind of represent not just um, the United States, but all around the world. So these butterflies are drawn from butterflies that live in other places. So I think that's really cool. There's a couple of other stamp sets where they've done that too with um, leaves, the stitched leaves. Um, that's not what it's called, but it was um, in the catalog this fall. That one was also a global set. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Lynn. It's great to see you. Hi, Lisa. All right, so the other dies that you get besides this lovely big one is you get an individual um, detailed die for each one of these as well. So they coordinate. How fun is that? So when you cut these out, you will get these detailed 
little butterflies, which of course you can use by themselves, or you can layer on top of the stamped butterfly. You can also just cut these out without having stamped them and you get these wonderful um, butterfly images that you can layer with the detail. There's so many, so many ways to use the stamp set. The other dies that you get, let me pull those over really quickly. You get these cool little background images. So one looks like bricks, it cuts out a little row of bricks. One looks like little, like a splatter, cuts that out. And then one doesn't cut anything out. It just ingrains this cool little hatch, like a cross hatch mark into your paper. It's really cool. And I haven't been able to use any of those on the cards yet because I literally just got this in the mail. Okay, so those are the dies and the stamps. Let me just move those over here for a second. So just to review this little bundle here, the stamp set and the dies, those are gonna be available in the next catalog. And it's called Butterfly Brilliance Bundle. It's $54.75. Now, what they're offering right now is a set of um, six by six designer series paper called Butterfly Bijou. And then this pack of specialty paper that's called Natural Touch. So here is what those look like. There are six designs. So here is kind of the watercolor side or the smaller pattern side. And then the other side has all these gorgeous little butterflies on them. So this is while supplies last. So this is just um, for a little bit. Um, but it coordinates with the dies, so that's kind of cool. And then here's a six by six um, piece that I cut from the 12 by 12 of the specialty um, natural touch designer series paper. It is etched. It's kind of like a glossy paper. It's nice and thin, um, and it's etched with lines to look like a wood grain. So I haven't tried um, blending on this or sponging, but I'm imagining that's gonna look really cool too. So if you order this bundle for me during the um, month of March, you will get um, one sheet of each of these butterfly papers and then a six by six sheet of this for free. That will just be your gift for getting that bundle this month. Okay, are you ready? I am ready to make some cards. Let me move my papers here. Okay, oops, I forgot. I have, I have gotten some so, 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 so cute cards in the mail. Let me just share with you. This is from my demonstrator friend, Cheryl. She's watching today. She made me this card We're using the Darling Donkey. I love how she made the greeting in the background. I love that. That's my favorite technique. And we talked about this yesterday when she gave it to me. She um, used the blending pens to color that donkey and it's so beautiful. And she, instead of stamping in black, she stamped in um, basic gray and it just looks so soft. He looks cuddly, like a little stuffed animal. So thank you, Cheryl. And then this one I just got recently from another demonstrator friend, Rhonda, and it's so cute. She made this New Year's card. And then this is from my other friend, Cheryl. And she is using the touch of ink. I almost forgot what it's called. Touch of ink stamp set. So cute. I love that hummingbird. And then this is from another demonstrator. I guess they're all from demonstrator friends. That's awesome. This is from um, my demonstrator friend, Sue. I must be very special. Look how many embellishments she put on my card. I'm feeling very blessed. This is really cool. I don't even know what she calls this, but I'm gonna have to figure, learn how you make this card. It's kind of cool. It's like a, a fun gatefold with a little, so thank you, thank you. I love getting cards in the mail. All right, so let's put our cards together. So this is a swing card. Um, a swing card has a little movement to it when you open it, okay? So you're gonna see what I mean in a second. Um, so first, I need you to see how fun this piece of paper is. So I'm going to bring in um, Mrs. Cut Boss here, and we are going to cut on this piece of paper, because guess what? 
in true Stampin' Up! style, they created one of the sheets of this paper to coordinate exactly with the dies. So you just have to plop this beautiful die onto this paper and then it cuts out all these butterflies straight down the middle. So let's do that first and that's gonna give us the piece we're gonna use on our card. Let me bring this over here. I think I need to do it this way because I'm right-handed, okay. piece of washi tape off. Look at the butterflies. Woohoo. All right, so we are going to use those on the card. So I'm just going to set those aside. But we're going to leave the big shot close by because we're going to need it for this card. All right, so this is a card um, that uses a half a sheet for your card base and uses one piece of six by six. And we're going to use just about all of that. So let me just score this in the middle. Like that. So that's our card base. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this piece of cards, um, designer series paper. So we're going to take off three fourths of an inch from one side. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut at four. Okay, and essentially what this gives us, pull these down here, is three pieces that we're gonna use on our card, like that, and then this one we just have to trim to match these. So I'm creating these to be um, all five and a fourth inch long. So this is the only little piece we don't use here, this cute little square. So we'll save him and put him on something else. So these are the pieces that are going to go on the card and they're all five and a fourth, three fourths inch, two inches, four inches. Okay. So a swing card, a swing card has um, a window, but kind of only half of a window and the way that it's folded, that window kind of swings open when you open your card. So what you need to make um, something similar is you need a set of nesting dies. And so I pulled out, um, my sets that are called layering circles, layering squares, and layering ovals. They're all on page 181 of the catalog. Um, you've got these beautiful sets. They've been around for a long time. They've got a whole set of scalloped um, images or dies, and then they have the regular dies, and they all nest together so you can create fun little windows. And these really work the best for this particular um, project. If you have stitched um, stitched shapes, they will work. It'll, you just have to kind of adjust a little bit. So I'm going to use the ovals. And so you can see I have a set here that nests together. So we're going to use um, the scalloped one first to create that little swing mechanism. So the first thing you have to do is score your card front at two and an eighth, which is exactly half. So let me measure two and an eighth like that. So now we've got a score mark exactly in half. This is important um, because you're only going to cut half of this die. So let me show you how you do that. So the, the front of the card is going to go through um, the cut and emboss machine first, and you're going to center your scalloped die on the card, and then I'm just going to secure that with a little bit of washi tape. And then the positioning of this plate is what makes it happen. So what you want to do is only put the plate over this section, which would be the very, you know, the right edge of your card front and you wanna bring that plate right up to the score line and then you can just kind of make it go a smidge over. Just like that. And then you send that through. Hold on, mine got all 
wonky. I'm kind of doing this sideways here, so it's um. Okay, so now the plate is only covering half of that die, so it's only going to cut half of the die. Okay, so when you take this off, you will see that it only cut half. So it'll only cut where that plate goes. So now what you do is you take this piece and you fold it back like that. And now you, can you see the whole oval here? And then when you close the card, you've got a whole oval um, in the center of your card. So here's this, how the swing works. When you are opening the card, you can see that little piece kind of swings back and forth. Super easy. This is the very, very basic, easy swing card. Okay, pretty cool. So the other thing that you need now with the nesting piece is you need the piece um, to be your focal point. And you can make this any color. I'm going to do white. And I like to cut three of them because I like one here and then you need one here, and then I like to put one on the back here, so you can kind of have multiple messages. So I've already cut three in the basic white out of that nesting oval, and so we're going to put that together. All right, so before we do that, let's get this paper um, onto our card and out of the way. So this four inch by five and a fourth inch piece, this is gonna cover the whole inside. That's another reason I love this card is because it's just as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. And then we'll put the two inch piece right here like that. And then this three fourths inch piece I'm gonna put out front. Um, that's optional, obviously you can, all of it's optional depending on how you wanna decorate it. But this is kind of cool because it uses up a whole sheet of, of your six by six designer series paper. So let me put that right there. And so since I cut them at five and a fourth inch, that's they mount, you know, kind of perfectly matted across the whole card. Okay, so there's our card. And let's stamp a greeting. I'm gonna use um, some of the sayings from the Hydrangea Haven stamp set. And I'm going to use my memento. I love this greeting that says, you make me smile. Like that. So this is going to go on the front. Because it's a nesting die, then you already get that nice little border around there. And let's bring in some of our butterflies. I think I want this beautiful pink one here. So I'm only gonna put adhesive on part of the butterfly, the part that's sticking over. I wouldn't put adhesive on there. You can actually bend that little wing up if you want. And then let's do this other little one down here. like that. So those will do that. All right, let's work on the inside now. So I'm going to put one here. And then instead of doing a greeting, I'm just going to put a nice big another butterfly here. Like that. And then let's do our greeting on the inside where we can write a message. Now I want, I want this to end up being exactly under where this is. So if you kind of, I put the adhesive on here already and I'm just gonna line it up and hold it and then close my card like that. And now it's in the exact right place. And we'll put our other greeting on there. 
All right, so that is an easy swing fold. What do you think about that? Let me show you with the other layering pieces. I chose one of the layering squares and I used my other three butterflies that I cut out before and put those in there using a different piece of powder and paper. So there's the square. And then I used the circles. And this time I just stamped one of the butterflies in there and made a get well card. Love, love, love this. All right, so I've got a pattern for you that'll be on my um, reallyrobinstamps.com blog later on this afternoon. So you'll have this pattern. Let me show you a couple others that I made with the butterflies. Um, I decided to try and use another piece, uh, another pack of um, pattern paper that's called um, Playful Patterns. And so I kind of just used other um, pieces. Here I stamped that background stamp on that side, like that. And this one I stamped and cut out those little butterflies. I think I love the butterflies on this swing card because it kind of, you know, butterflies are always kind of in motion. So it looks like they're in motion. So here is an example of another way you can adjust this card. Instead of putting that two inch strip of um, pattern paper here, you can go ahead and mount it on this side before you cut your piece. So for this one, you would mount this piece of paper here, which is actually like, it'll look like it's the inside of your card. And you just want to mount it around the edge so that you can take this off. And then you would send it through the big shot, you know, like that. And it would create that. So it creates a little bit different um, look for the cart. So that's another option. Aren't those detailed butterflies beautiful? And so here's one with the stitch shapes. So I said it was, wasn't as easy. So the stitch shapes... Um, it's not that it's not easy, but when you um, have to put them through this way to create that swing fold, the other half of the stitched when it flips back is like upside down, so it doesn't look as cool. Um, but you can totally do it, but I would just replace instead of mounting um, a piece or a square a little bit smaller than your first stitched shape, I would just put the same size in there, which totally works too. So you. All right, that is the easy swing fold card. Now I'm gonna show you a stepped up version. Okay, let me get my other piece over here. So this is called a pop-up. Um, a pop-up swing fold. So it's just a little bit different. I'll show you how that works like that. Okay, and let's put one together so you can see how it works. So for this one, you need three pieces. You need a card base. You need a four inch by five and a fourth inch piece of pattern paper to go on the front. And then you need a piece that's five inches by eight inches, which is gonna be the mechanism for the inside. And then for this one, I'm using um, the nesting stitched rectangles. So this is a great one to use the, the stitched ones for, um, cause it's just a little bit different. It doesn't flip um, the same way, so you won't see a backward stitch. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is adhere this to the front of your card. Actually, the first thing we're gonna do is do some scoring. So we've got We've got our card base put together. So let me score this in half at four and a quarter. This is Knight of Navy. 
Okay, and we're using this beautiful, beautiful designer series paper. Did you guys see the video um, that Stampin' Up! posted yesterday showing how the artist created all of this paper by actually painting those beautiful murals? Mur Ooh, that was not easy. Murals. And then they, you know, took pictures of it and turned it into beautiful designer series paper. I love, I love to see that. All right, so I'm mounting this onto the card front, but again, I only want adhesive right around the edge because we're going to cut this out and we want it to come out. So let's go ahead and send that through. So this uses the larger of the stitched rectangle dies. And I'm going to center that in the middle of the card. Tack it down so it doesn't move on me with some washi tape. And for this one, you don't have to offset your plate or anything like that. You wanna just send it through normally. take that off. So now we've got this piece and then this piece comes out as well. So these can be used on another card. And then we've got this great window card ready to go and turn into a swing card. All right, so let me quickly cut out the other stitched piece and I'm gonna do that in petal pink to coordinate with our card. And I'll just do that over here. Okay, here is that piece. So that's gonna be mounted in the middle. And now we'll make the mechanism for the inside. So this is again, five by eight. And this is awesome. But I love, I love it when things score like this. You score it at two inches and four inches and six inches. You can't get better math in my world than every two inches. So this is eight. So that means it's, you know, each little section is two inches. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is just fold this in half like that. And the way that this um, start, I think the easiest way to put this together is to hold this kind of like a card, but it's gonna be backwards, like you would be opening it backwards. And you're gonna insert that into your um, card like this. So you've got this piece and it's gonna go like that. And you can see because it's five by eight, you get this beautiful um, edge here, okay? So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna attach this part of your frame onto this piece here. So this, the two open ends of this piece are gonna go right up and butt right up against the um, middle of the card where that score line is. And then you're gonna put adhesive on the top and on the bottom and on this edge like that. So you've got adhesive here, here, and here, which is gonna put adhesive right here on this side so we want only one side of this to be secure and then all you have to do is close the card like that and now that's attached to the front like that all right so the next thing that you're going to do is fold on that line the score line here and you're just going to make sure it's all straight Maybe it's all looking crooked. Okay, I think that's all right. All right, so we're gonna make sure that's straight. And now we're gonna adhere this one to this side. This one's gonna actually bend this way. So I'm just gonna bend that before I um, put that down. So this one's gonna fully get hooked onto the base of the card. So I'm gonna put adhesive all the way around those four edges here. And then we're just gonna lay that down like that 
and then close our card like that. This is gonna fold out and then you might need to just re, re, um, rescore that. So that is kind of what you get here. It's attached right there by the fold and on the top and the bottom and then it's attached over here. So that is what creates that little flip. So whatever's on the front is gonna to flip to the inside um, to swing that way. So that's that's why they call it a swing card. So I'm just gonna make these folds nice and, um, on the score lines, nice and crisp there so that that moves like we want it to. All right, so now it's time to do the focal point. And so I am going to use the art gallery stamp set to do this piece and I'm going to stamp the stem from the large flower in mossy meadow like that and then I'm going to cut out the flower to go on top and I wanted to show you this little trick with your um, stamparatus tool. If you haven't gotten it out recently, um, let me remind you of something cool that it does. So here I've got my images for the flower and this particular flower is a two-step. So it's got a, um, a detailed image and then it has a kind of a base image that together look amazing. Um, separately they look great too. So one of the ways you can save yourself some time and energy um, when you have to die cut a lot, especially if you're going to make multiples, is to kind of make yourself a little template, okay? So this might seem backwards, but um, this is one of the brilliant things about the Stamparatus. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a template first, and I'm going to use this little piece here. So this is just some basic white, and I'm going to stamp... I'm going to want my flower to be right there. So I'm going to put that where I want it, pick it up with the Stamparatus, reposition my paper and my magnet. Then I'm going to ink this in Rose Rococo and stamp that onto the white. And then I'm going to position the detailed image exactly where I want it to be. This lines up really nicely with that little white um, piece in the middle. And I'm going to pick that up with the other plate, like that. And that is going to be stamped in Mary Merlot. These colors look so pretty together. So now I've got that flower. All right, so that's my first flower. So now I'm gonna take it to the big shot and I'm gonna cut it out really quickly. I won't make you watch that. So this technique with your Stamparatus saves you a lot of time if you were gonna be making a bunch of flowers because once you have your Stamparatus set up um, with the images, then you can just kind of really assembly line the rest of your production and you don't have to worry about lining this up over and over again in your cut and emboss machine. Okay, so I've got one, but now I've got this template and that's the most important thing here. So now I can go ahead and take a bunch of, um, of basic white cardstock and cut out a bunch of these flowers like this. Um, you can actually cut with basic white cardstock. You can cut two with, with most every die. So that's really, um, helpful, right? Um, when you want to make multiple cards. So now all I have to do is pop this into my template like that. And because these are already here, I've already established that. I'm going to re-ink it with Rose Rococo. It's going to stamp exactly where it should. Oh, I can already see I missed a spot. Hold on. Got a little line there. Let me just fix that edge. Okay, so now we've got that part of the Rose Rococo. And then let's do our Mary Merlot. I'm 
because that's in the template. You don't have to, you know, line it up again. And look how perfect the edge is because it's just, it's going to stamp exactly where you cut it out the first time. It's just, I think that's amazing. So you can just pop another one in and do it kind of assembly line fashion. So that is a great thing to remember about your Stamparatus. Let's put in the last step of this beautiful flower. And that is this tiny little detailed image. This sits right above where this white space is, like that. So I kind of just tried to mimic um, the colors that were on the paper. So let's pop him up onto our card <clears throat> focal point here with some dimensionals. like that and then we need a greeting and so I already pre-stamped one of the little dies and greetings that come with this art gallery stamp set best wishes and now we're going to mount this on the front so to make sure that this swings for this pop-out swing fold you only mount your focal point to the right hand side of the score line. So you can see the score line kind of goes down right down the middle of your um, window, no matter what shape you kind of make. So you're going to just want to put adhesive on the right hand side. So I'm going to just kind of use this eyeball how I want this to be. And then we will center. All right, so it's not attached on this side, just on the right-hand side. And then see how it pops to the swings to the inside. A last thing we're going to do to make this so pretty is use some of this beautiful shimmer ribbon. And attach that onto our flower. So I'm going to use a glue dot for that. right down there give it a little trim all right what do you think about that I think this is a fun little card um, I like I like this one um, with the white in the middle too you can kind of stamp a big greeting on the inside as well or right on the inside and when it stands up it's nice um, and pretty to be displayed so that is a pop up pop out pop out pop pop out yes <laughs> what did I call it I can't remember all right so let me show you some other samples of this move these things out of the way here We've got this one. Here's one with the Forever Fern stamp set, and I used the nested stitched um, dies. So here's what I mean. You can stamp a nice big greeting um, on the inside. And then this is with the Dandy Garden and the um, Dandelion, not Dandelion. It's the Dragonfly stamp set, and I used stitched ovals on this one. Added a little pattern paper on the inside just to make it different. And then here's one with the True Love Designer Series paper. Instead of making this a whole focal point, I just used um, the piece that came out of the center, and I reused it but colored it and added a pop-up little greeting. Who wouldn't love that? And then this one is using the um, textured background paper. And this one I just used um, straight squares and I made it the exact same size. I didn't make it, um, I didn't leave any edge just to kind of give it a continuous look since it kind of looked like tile in the background. like that I love this one 
And then the last one, um, I used that nice wood grain um, paper that I showed you that that is available while supplies last. And I made a beautiful kind of a masculine card with that wood grain paper. I don't know if you can kind of see the grains in there. And then I used that amazing birthday. Oh my goodness, look at my inky finger. It's been a good stamping day if I'm covered in black ink. All right, and there's the inside. I used what I popped out of that and I just put it in the inside. I used my stays on to stamp on that since it was kind of, um, it's a slicker surface and that worked perfectly. So I look forward to trying to stamp on that a little bit more. So yeah, this is your pop out pop out swing fold card and then these are your let's bring those back out your easy swing card swing 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 into spring and butterflies there you go thank you so much for watching this tutorial today i hope that you give the swing cards a try something new a little little motion in your card action and um, I look forward to stamping some more with the butterflies with you again if you order the butterfly bundle with me you'll get paper for free I'll send that to you um, I'm also going to be offering a butterfly class yet but I will um, put the details of that in the email for you and send that to you thank you again so much for watching and um, happy Friday have a great rest of your day bye-bye